Hello and welcome. Living on this planet for multiple centuries, I thought I've seen everything. But I got proven wrong. People are literally trading probabilities on Bitcoin. Not opinions, not chart patterns, actual market priced probabilities. Every hour a market like this opens and answers one simple question. Will Bitcoin be higher or lower when the hour closes? And the number you see on screen is the crowd's probability estimate, which raises a very serious question. If this is a probability market, can we model those probabilities? And if yes, can we beat them? Now, I don't know the answer yet. Prediction markets are competitive by design. If you place a random bet in a 50-50 market, your expected chance of being correct is 50%. But you still pay trading fees and bid are spreads. That means your expected profit on a random bet is slightly negative. So without an informational or timing advantage, trading these markets is mathematically a losing game. So today is not a strategy video. This is an experiment. Step one is proof we can even access real poly market data with code. No claims, no promises, just building the data pipeline. And here's the deal. If this video gets real interest, let's say at least 50,000 views, I built the full infrastructure, live data collection, modeling, backtesting, everything. If not, I just drop it and move on. No bad feelings. Before touching any code, let's understand what we are actually looking at here. This is a live poly market, Bitcoin up, down market. On the left, you see the reference price of Bitcoin at the start of the hour. In this case, 7 a.m. Yes, I'm awake this early. On the weekend, I am on the grind here. Just kidding. I'm in a other time zone here. So it's just middle of the day. That's the price the market will compare against when the hour closes. Just below, you see the current Bitcoin price updating in real time. And on the right, you see two buttons, up and down. The number on those buttons is not, you know, arbitrary. It's the market's implied probability, meaning up at... Well, this is changing every second now, but let's take up at 20 cents means the crowd believes there is a 20% chance Bitcoin will finish higher this hour. Down at, let's say, 82 now means a 82% chance Bitcoin will finish lower. These prices move continuously, as you see, as traders react to Bitcoin's price, movements, and any other information. And below in the order book here, you can see actual bids and ask. I mean, I will link that in the video description so you can take a look for yourself. So real people placing limit orders to buy and sell these probability shares. So this is not a demo chart. This is a real-time probability market with real money. Once you see it this way, the next question becomes obvious. Can we pull this probability data with code, store it, and analyze it? Let's find out. All right, enough with the yapping. Let's get into the code. And just to be clear, this is super low effort draft code. It's just a proof of concept to answer one question. Can we pull real poly market probability data with Python? end to end. In general, to pull historical prices from poly market, we need two things. First, we need to identify the market and the outcome tokens. In our case, that's simply up and down. Second, we need the token ID for the specific outcome we want, because the price history endpoint is keyed by token ID, not by e.g. market title. First helper function is pure convenience. On Polymarket, every market has a URL like polymarket.com slash event slash something. 
that something is called the slug, basically the market identifier. And this function just takes whatever I paste, either the full URL or just the slug, and then returns the slug. So I don't have to manually clean the input every time. A set, optional, pure convenience function. The next one, get market by slug, is far more interesting. This is where I talk to Polymarket's Gamma API, which serves market metadata. The goal here is not prices yet, it's structure. What are the outcomes? What are the token IDs for those outcomes? And the function just sends a GET request to the market's endpoint with the slug, then it passes the JSON response. And there is a small, quite frankly, annoying detail. Depending on the endpoint and market, the API sometimes returns a list, sometimes a dictionary. So the code handles those cases and returns a single market object. Then we got outcomes and tokens. This takes the market object and it extracts two fields. One, outcomes. So in our example, that would be up or down or both in that case. And the second one is an ID per outcome. Sometimes those fields come back as actual lists. Sometimes they come back as JSON string. So this function also normalizes that. And the reason we need that is pretty simple. Poly market prices live on the outcome tokens. If you want prices, to, you don't ask for Bitcoin up or down. You ask for the token ID that represents up or down. That's the only reason why we are going through this struggle. Now, finally, this is just taking an input and then it's printing out stuff. So we got the market title, the slug, and then it prints each outcome with its token ID. So let me just execute that for you and tell you how that works. So in this case, I'm taking an input field. I know this is very bad practice, but this is a good way to showcase that. Now I have the wrong thing in my copy paste, but even better, then I can just show you how exactly you're doing it. You go in the URL here and you see this, the slug, just copy paste this here. And then you execute that and you get now the title, the slug and the outcomes. So up and down, these are just the outcomes and then the token ID for those outcomes. And these ID or IDs you need now to get price history, all right? And this is going to happen in the next function, which looks quite big, but essentially it's doing a very simple thing. So let's just quickly go through it. So the function get price history, which does a very obvious thing, namely getting price history takes a token ID, which we just extracted. And this function now calls the CLOB endpoint called price history or prices dash history. Again, you pass in the token ID and it returns a time series, timestamp and price. The price here is the mid price of that outcome token, which you can interpret as the market's implied probability. Then we're just doing some passing, extract timestamp and price, build a pandas, a data frame, sort it, deduplicate it, and also convert timestamps into human readable UTC timestamps. So let's execute that. And this again is asking for an input. Again, very bad practice. Obviously you're just working with function inputs when you bring this live. I'm just doing that for presentation purposes here. So EG, I wanna have the price history for the up token here. And then you see I'm getting a data frame, which is just a time series containing the human readable timestamp, also the Unix timestamp. This is just the machine readable timestamp of this one, then emit price. And yeah, I mean, we can plot that. So you see what's going on here, just plotting the tail. And obviously just to make this very clear, if you use this, this is pure history. So this won't work on live events because the live events 
don't have history data yet. So you need to take an event which already took place here, all right? And this one, we just copy paste it, is done now. So if you refresh the site, the 7 a.m. one, or 6 a.m. one in this case, is already done, okay? So this is perfectly fine. Now, if you want to see it visually, you can plot the tail of this data frame. So I'm just setting the index to the UTC timestamp, then plotting the mid price. And you see a quite interesting story here. The line starts at around 50%, meaning the market initially believed up and down were equally likely. As the hour then progresses, Bitcoin's price moves and the market continuously updates its belief. Then you see a sharp drop. The market rapidly concludes that up is unlikely. Finally, the probability snaps to one, meaning the outcome is now effectively decided. This entire curve is real historical data pulled directly from Poly Markets API. You can play around with this notebook, the code or the notebook is in the memberships drive. Be invited to become a member, supports me, supports my work and you get access to multiple perks. And pray to the algorithm that it is distributing this video. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Bye. Bye.